history of words. This is a be very interesting. It might be it might be a little advanced. So um, just be aware of that. Uh, but it'll be very interesting. So uh, I'll wait for a few seconds so we can fill up the class. All right. So let's uh, see what we have here. And also, if you want to make sure you turn off your microphone unless you're speaking, it makes it easier for us to hear. I'm not sure where that's coming from. Okay, I think I got it. Um, all right. Yes, Freikar, yeah. He's jamming in the background. All right. So um uh yeah let's 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 talk to everyone um this is a this is a etymology class um so it's a very special topic it's not a typical uh english class but uh but it'll actually help us a lot in the in how we think about words and uh, it might actually help us remember words and re remember vocabulary better so it's interesting. So Assad. Hello. Hi, how are you? I'm fine. How are you? Good. Good to see you again. I'm good to see you too. Mm -hmm. So uh um so let me see. Let's see. This is Assad, but uh Somalia. Uh yeah. in Cairo. Yes. Uh no. Now, I mean, yeah. yeah. Uh huh. And tell us something interesting about yourself that we don't know. Uh, okay. Uh, I I I am a good cook. I love cook. Ah. Okay. It's not a good cook. Yeah. yeah. I like to cook too. Actually, I love love cooking. I um, hope I I uh, I open it a restaurant. Ah, so it's your dream to open a restaurant. Yeah, one day. What kind? What kind of food? Traditional food, Somali traditional food. Somalian. Traditional food. What? Say it again. Traditional or. Uh, traditional. Yes. Okay, so the microphone is it's very distorted and it's hard to hear the words. But okay, so traditional Somalian food? Yes. So can you give me an example of a, a traditional Somalian dish? Uh, like otka. Otka. Yes. It's meat. Uh, it's uh, beef meat, scoop. Mm -hmm. uh, with uh, you can eat it with uh, bread or anjel. It's uh, mm -hmm. it's uh, some and ambulo is a type of uh, food. Uh, Interesting. And so on. Good. No, I I sent it I sent it the the link. You, you, you didn't watch uh, yes. the last two. <laughs> interesting conversation. Uh, we had a conversation class a couple of days ago, and we had a we talked about food. And, yeah. Yes, and I'm still looking through all those links. And I, I've been so busy lately, but I'm definitely, I definitely want to find a Somalian restaurant. I want to find an Indonesian restaurant. Um, so actually, I think some other folks in this class were in that class. But, uh, but okay, enough about food. This is, this is, I want to talk for an hour about food. I mean, maybe some of us do. But okay. Uh, but thank you uh, for that interesting uh, tidbit. Okay, thank you. So Assad, the, the chef, Chef Assad. Uh, body. Hey, Anthony. It has been a long time. Yeah. Years? Yeah, it's been many. Yeah. Yeah. Good to see yeah. you again. Yeah, nice to see you too. Uh huh. So, so what, what have you done in this hour? I took a nap. <laughs> okay. Uh, I'm not the only lazy here. That's yeah, good. Lazy. I have but let me see. I keep strange hours. I, I, I stay up very late. Um, 
it's noon. It's noon here. Okay. Uh, did you had the the launch, of or after that class? Uh, no. I thought about it, and I'm like, I just don't even know what I want. So, so I have to figure out something to eat after this. <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right. I have to block this guy. Okay. Okay. <laughs> uh, anyway, you get some strange people that come here. Like, don't they have anything better to do? Like anything, like take a nap. Right? I don't know. So. Okay, so body, um, do you want to do this the quick introduction for anyone that, that hasn't met you yet? Okay, I'm. My name's Body. I'm from Colombia. I study business and finance. This is my last year. I'm doing an internship, and uh, that's it. Nice to meet you, everybody. Welcome back. Thank you. Uh, okay, um, Cello. Sousa, you there? Hi, uh, my name is Marcelo, Hi. I'm from Brazil. Marcelo, okay. Yes. And uh, what do you do there in Brazil? Uh, I work with uh, digital marketing. Digital marketing? Yes, digital marketing. Cool. And what city do you live in? Uh, Campinas and Sao Paulo. Okay. Awesome. Welcome to the class. Thank you. Okay. Cheche. Yeah. Hi again. Hi again. <laughs> yes. We meet again. So, um... Uh, she was also in the food, uh, the food conversation. So, and have you tried writing down what I said before? No, no, I haven't. I haven't had time, and there's been no time. But I will. I, I certainly will. So, um, <laughs> so when we had our food conversation, Cheche was very proud that a very famous American news source said that the top one. And two most tasty foods in the entire world were both from her country. So she was very proud of that. And that country is Indonesia. She's from Sumatra. Uh, Thanks. And uh, actually, I gotta find, I gotta show you guys something. If you look at, okay, Sumatra is known for coffee. Th this is important. This this ties back to etymology. Don't worry. I'm not getting off the track. I'm not getting off topic. So, um, Sumatra is also known for coffee. I just Lua, white coffee. Lua. Very famous of coffee, Lua in here. It's what? Lua. You, you never heard about this coffee? Yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. uh, so, oh, Luvak, okay, yeah. No, um, I don't know. I don't know if I've heard that word. I just, I just usually hear the, the region. So um, if everyone clicks on the Facebook link I click I, I typed in the uh, in the chat there it's uh, for one it's the it's the Colingo group if anyone's not on it you can join that group and uh, follow uh, what the teachers are saying and they might tell you about upcoming classes but also if you click on that link if you're on Facebook if you use Facebook if you click on that. Um, uh, maybe the top posts might be uh, from me and it's a picture and I want you to look at this picture so um, and if you don't have Facebook, is there anyone that doesn't use Facebook because I could share the picture because that's no problem I might teacher I don't have Facebook okay so uh, let me just let me look at this let's see if this works Okay, so uh, for anyone that doesn't have Facebook, try that link, and then you should see uh, just the photo, just the image, because this image, I, this is very important. This is introducing the class, actually. And anyone that's on Facebook, please join the group, and you can and you can you know see the news and stuff. So, but uh, if you click on that image, you'll see. Uh, does that work? Do you guys all see that picture? 
it's it's yes. a picture of coffee, right? We were just talking about coffee, and this is a really fun and interesting uh, etymology of the word coffee. So, um, and I really like this picture. And when I was kind of planning, the, like, what am I going to talk about today? I thought of this picture. I, I, one of my favorite other language websites. I have another language website I really like, and they shared this on their Facebook page. And I thought of that picture in my head. I'm like, I gotta find, find that picture and show it to people because it's a great way to start the class. So we're going back in time and finding all these cognates uh, uh, and seeing these words that sound similar in different languages, and how words kind of travel through time and geography. So in this picture, we see that uh, a long time ago, Kavat uh, Albun, which is wine of the bean, uh, interesting enough, because coffee comes from a bean, uh, I guess is what they call coffee, or what they do call coffee. Uh, and then uh, you can shorten that to just Kava. So, um, and Turkey, which is close to the uh, Arabic-speaking countries, they borrowed that word, kava, and they call it kava. Uh, and furthermore, the Dutch, I don't know how that happened, the Dutch, and, well, I suppose, the Dutch uh, borrowed kava, uh, kava and called it coffee, and English coffee. So, they all have a k sound. It's the Dutch was since 2001, and for us, it's a, it's a number of things. Okay, they all uh, started at the highest level. The technology okay. sector is. I need you to turn off that that sound. So I, I'm not even done with the introductions yet, but I just wanted to go right into this. But um, so uh, what was I going to say? Um, so no, yeah, I forgot. I forgot what I was going to say. Anyway, so that's just a little interesting uh, uh, tidbit about uh, etymology. So we're talking about the history of words and where they come from. All right. OK, so anyway, let's continue. Freikar is here. Hi, teacher. How are you? Good. What's up? What's new? Uh, new anything. Uh, all my family is at home. Listen to music very, very hard. Yeah, I noticed. <laughs> and uh, I told them, please, I, I don't want the music so hard because I'm, I'm starting English right now with the teacher, with all my friends, but they didn't want. Wow, <laughs> they, didn't care. they didn't care that you were studying English with your friends. They just said, uh, we, we want to listen to music. It's Sunday. <laughs> no, it's because uh, it's a mother's month. Mm. And everybody is here, and it's okay. It's funny to be with my family, but I want to study English right now, and I don't want to listen to music. But uh -huh. I can do anything. Yeah, well, we'll we'll make it work. It'll work. Sorry. We'll we'll make it work. It'll be okay. I can hear you. <laughs> uh, and do you want to give the quick introduction? Uh, the People that haven't met you, Faikar? It's okay. Uh, well, hello, everybody. I'm Faikar Villanueva. I'm from Venezuela. Uh, I start in English at home. And uh, I'm 18 years old. And I think English is all I like. I love English. And I'll try to learn it. Until I know it, a uh, very good or as I native speaker English is it good? Awesome, that's a good goal. <laughs> that sounds good. Yes, excellent. Yeah, me too. I'd love to learn another language as good as a native speaker. This is a great place to do it because you're speaking to a lot of native speakers. Good. Good to see you again. Good to see you, Jer. Okay. So. Uh, Hamoud? Yes, yes, teacher. Hi, how's it going? I'm good. How are you? Hi, I'm good. Hi everyone. How are you? Uh, I'm uh, Hamoud. I'm from Saudi Arabia. I'm 40 years old. 
working as a project manager now. Uh, is that enough or? Sure. What? Uh, <laughs> let's see. What city do you live in? Uh, in Riyadh. It's the capital. It's the capital of Saudi Arabia and uh, almost one of the biggest city here in the Gulf area mm -hmm. or in the Middle East maybe now. It's become bigger and bigger and the population is rising year by year. It's almost now more than 5 million people living in the city. Okay. So it's crowded and busy and <laughs> yeah. it's difficult to move in now. And yeah. Well, that's cool though. That's exciting. I'll have to check uh, excuse out. me, teacher. You was talking about a picture about a cafe. I j uh, just joined, and you was was talking about that, but I didn't get uh, any link here. Or okay, so do you have a, a chat, a chat uh, thing on the Colingo. on the right? Yeah, the Colingo chat. Yes, yes, I have it. Okay, so the last link you see my my name on there is I'm Anthony. I posted the last uh, link. Okay, okay. Or yeah. the I found it. I found okay. it. Okay, so check that picture out and just take a look. Yeah, I love the cafe, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Me too. Uh, so that's uh, that's what this class is about. Okay. And I think it's a very interesting photograph. A bit interesting story of the word coffee, and where it comes from. It. Oh, and now I remember what I was going to say. So okay, back to that. Not thanks for bringing it back up again. So. Uh, so we look at these words, we see kavat, kava, kave, coffee, coffee. They all they almost sound, I mean, they, sound, they look very different, but like if you listen to the, the, the consonants I'm using, I'm starting with a k, k sound in each one. There's a a sound, there's a v or a f sound, which v and f are very similar because they use the same part of your, the same part of your mouth. Uh, and they all end with a, a, with a vowel, with a kind of an unstressed vowel coffee. So like... So you can see how how they have uh, been conserved. This word has been conserved throughout time and geography. And I know I also read a really interesting article about a week ago. I shared it with another class or something once, but I might share that again about uh, a new study about um, where researchers maybe now think that there's some ultra conserved words some some words that have that have lasted for maybe 15,000 years um, that go that are that you can even link them between very different language families even and that somehow we 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 keep these words you know before we even had written languages we keep the same words uh, forever and you know and it's it's really interesting how that how that can be so conserved uh, so maybe I'll share that link later if we're, if we're still interested in etymology by the end of this. Okay, great. So, um, Julio. Hi there. Hi. Can you hear me? Yeah, great. I can hear you great. Mm -hmm. So, uh, uh, it's been a long time since I uh, logged on, uh, but I've felt like I was a little rusty, so I decided to come back Great. Uh, practicing. Um, etymology seems to be uh, really interesting. Uh, most of the time I hear about Latin and Greek, but mm -hmm. uh, I'm, a, I'm a coffee freak myself, uh, so it's a nice thing that uh, we're doing some research as to what the, the origin of the word is. And um, it's really interesting. I, I, I virtually drink coffee all day long, <laughs> believe it or not. Uh, teacher, are you a linguist yourself? I'm just curious. Um, I'm what I could call an armchair linguist. There's an expression in English. I'm going to type this in the right box here. One second. Ah, uh, armchair linguist. So you mean that you do it for the fun of it or something like that? Yeah, I'm just I'm just very interested in it. I'm not a professional. I'm not an expert. I'm just very passionate about it. I'm passionate about language. I'm passionate about culture, geography, um, history of language, and uh, and stuff like that. So um, so I just like to look at it myself and you know study that kind of stuff for fun. 
Right. So if you're so the same here. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cool. So in this uh, this uh, this uh, idiom or this phrase, uh, armchair for everybody in the class, like you could say, I'm an armchair, you know, whatever. You could say, uh, armchair uh, philosopher. And so that's uh, that's someone that's not really an expert, but just uh, likes to think of, likes to philosophize. About things. So that's an armchair philosopher, not you know just someone that does it for fun. Armchair linguist, armchair. Linguist. So I'm just kind of making fun of myself because I'm not an expert. I just am interested in. When you when you say uh, someone is armchair on, did we say any any? Uh, I'm talking about the management, armchair and the management. That's meaning he's. Uh, Kind of goros or kind of pioneer of the management, or um, I don't. Think, I, I've never heard it used that way. It's usually just. Uh, it's usually uh, a way to interested on this subject, or maybe interested on this subject. Yeah, yeah. So it's a way to you always you always put you have to put another word after it. So it's like mm -hmm. doctor. <laughs> maybe uh -huh. that, that's good at helping helping people. Uh, but you have to put another word after it, um, and then you can call somebody that, or you can call you. It's often used to. to it's often self-referential. It's often when you're talking about yourself. But you can t talk to some, tell someone else. You know, he's an armchair uh, explorer, or you know, whatever. So okay. All right. Let's keep going here. I'm. So Nice meeting you, teacher. By yes, the way. yes. So nice meeting you. Welcome. Thank you. Uh, okay. Yeah. Thanks for joining us again. So, uh, Rafael, we're still I haven't even talked to everyone yet. Rafael. Hi. 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 How's it hi, going? Hi, teacher. Could you hear me? Yeah. yeah I can hear you great. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Perfect. I'm just enjoying to the class. I, I don't know what to about the topic. Okay, so this topic is uh, etymology. Ah, yeah. Etymology, and uh, so etymology is the history of of words. Yeah. Thank so, you. Yes. Oh. And do you want to do a quick introduction? Tell people where you're from. I'm Rafael. I'm from Spain. Um, an interesting thing is ab about etymology. Is Spain? Uh, his name is. Uh, um, in, it's from the Latin, Iberia, Hispania, and Hispania is the, the in the translation is the 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 country of the rabbits. The For rabbit? this reason, the rabbits. Yeah. I, I, um, it could be that um, that many years ago in the ancient times, uh, I have a lot of echo. I think yeah. uh, Spain was uh, full of rabbits. Right now, there are not so much, but etymology, <laughs> etymology, etymology, yeah. is country of rabbits. <laughs> wow. Okay, that's awesome. Thank you for the lesson. Nice. Thank you for that lesson. So he just gave us the etymology of his own country, and uh, so Spain comes from España, and it's usually España in most languages. But I guess it's also in, in Latin, literally the land of rabbits. <laughs> awesome. Very interesting. Great. And that's what we'll be doing today. That's what. That's just the class. So great. Um, so finally, it's 25 minutes into class, and we've had such a good discussion and talked to so many people. Finally, Salma, how are you? Uh, fine, teacher. Um, uh, Egyptian, um, twins four years. I'm a pharmacist. I attended uh, with you before. Uh, uh, let's play a game. Yeah. It was fun. Yeah, it was really yeah. fun. Good to see you again. This is a yeah. very, very different class, but it will also be fun. Our classes, we always try to make yeah. our classes no matter what the topic. <laughs> so, but the game classes are actually yeah. great. So, um, okay. you're a pharmacist. But, so, you're not an armchair pharmacist. Assist, are you? <laughs> no, I'm working. <laughs> <laughs> You're an expert. In You're health a, uh, insurance uh, hospital. Professional, <laughs> professional pharmacist, not an armchair pharmacist. I would want to. I would not want to see an armchair <laughs> pharmacist. I would probably just go to a, a professional. So. Good. Good to know. All right. 
Okay, cool. So now we can really dig into it. Um, so we've uh, we've kind of already discussed what etymology is in a nutshell, but let's look further into it. Uh, I'm going to share this page with you, uh, um, and I can do so that we can. We can uh, we can study it on our own for fun. Um, okay. Oops. So, um, does everyone see that? Yes. Okay. Uh, so, um, uh, Assad. Yes. Would you read the first paragraph here? Okay. What's uh, etymology? Mm -hmm. The word is, etymology is uh, different, derived from the Greek ethmos with meaning real and true. The end, the ending ology. So, sorry. Yeah. I, can, I, I can't see now. Uh, uh, Set the studies science of something as biology, geology, and that is the ethmology. Ethmology is the study of the original of word, how to evolve confused. Okay, uh, yeah, it's a study in the origins of words, a study of the origins of words. So, uh, uh, Assad just gave us the etymology of etymology. The etymology of etymology is, it comes from the Greek etymos, which means real or true. The ending ology, you see ology all the time in many languages. Well, the, it's different spelling, but this, this cognate, this, uh, this uh, suffix, you see all the time in words in many languages and, uh, and probably your language. Um, and it just means the study of something. So, um, so like biology, geology, um, in this case. Um, so etymology. All right. So thank you for that etymology of etymology. Um, body. Yes. Let's look at this little little. Whoa. Let's look at this little example here. Uh, here is another example. The ancient Greek word "ipos" means horse, and "potamus" means river. Uh, hence, "hippopotamus" uh, literally means river horse. Right. So, hippopotamus. Uh, if you really go back and do this and research this word, it's all it is is a, is a combination of two words. It doesn't even change the spelling. The spellings is the spelling is the same. Um, it's just two Greek words stuck together. It means river horse. And by the way, this word is uh, hence, which means therefore, or uh, so hence hippopotamus literally means river horse. Interesting. Okay. Um, Marcelo? Oh, hello. Hi. Okay, what about this third paragraph? Um... A few other parts of words derived derived from. Oh, sorry. Can you see it? Uh, no, I I can't see. Okay. Uh, see now. Okay. A few other parts of words derived. Just a minute. So make sure if anyone has their microphone on to turn it off, except for uh, so that we can. Sometimes if someone has their no has noise, it might switch the screen. Okay, can you see it? Yes, now I see. Uh, a few other parts of words derived from ancient Greek. Oh, mm -hmm. I can see now. Okay, um, not sure why. Does anyone else have a problem seeing? 
Yaha. A few other parts of words derived from ancient Greek are the long distance, micro, micro, small, phone, speak, and scope, look. From this come such words as telephone, telescope, and I can't see another time. Okay, yeah, microphone and microscope. I've also, so we can look at this later, I've sent the link uh, so we can read the link there. <clears throat> uh, so yeah, um, so we're going to just, he gave us a few more examples of these ancient Greek uh, pieces of words uh, derived, by the way, it means comes from, uh, comes from ancient Greek, uh, originates. Um, so, tele uh, just means long distance. Um, micro, so you know, telescope means to to look a long distance. Telescope, you can look into the stars. So, a microscope, uh, same thing. Uh, so, to to see to see to look very at very small things. Micro, small, scope, look. Uh huh. Good. So, Cheche. Yeah. How about this paragraph? Of course. Of, of course, not all words are derived derived from ancient Greek. The English language is a rich mixture of many languages, and that is what makes its etymology so interesting. In the interesting etymology section, you can learn how many words can about, can about, particularly those with amusing origins. We also have a page about the origins of saying and expression. Okay, good, very good. So, um, so, and like I said before, I've actually sent uh, sent the link to this page, and if you're interested, you can click on some of these other things to see some funny or interesting or, you know, different things about etymology. But you can check that out on your own. Or we, we'll probably look at some of it right now, though. Okay, good. So, so let's, um, let's look at, uh, let's just start by looking at the etymology of a word. Let's look at uh, assassin. Um, uh, Hamoud? Yes. Uh, you go to either page or? Um, if you could, uh, so yeah, what's what's an assassin? Here's the, uh, whoops, sorry about that. Here's the uh, definition of assassin. And could you read that? Can I go by the, the from the previous one, etymology section? Or? Um, here, I'll type in the link. Absolutely. That's the link if you want to, if it's easier, because sometimes it gets removed from the screen. Okay. Okay. So uh, I was looking at the word assassin. Assassin. You could read that, that, that piece, please. Yes. Uh, and murder generally is somewhat professional ASB uh, on, on who murder appointed a buoyant finger. Okay, so when you see ESP, it, it stands for especially, usually? Especially, yes. Especially uh, one, one who murders a prominent figure. A prominent figure means uh, a very important person. An important yes. So someone who, murder, someone who kills uh, Kill a, a king or a celebrity or someone, you call, uh, you know, someone that's very famous. If you kill that person, that makes you an assassin. So that's sort of a killer for someone famous. Right. Perfect. So, um, uh, okay, great. Thank you. Um, uh, Julio? Julio on the mute. Sorry about that. Um, my mic was off. Sorry about that. Uh, it's my turn, right? Well, yeah, I'm just going to have you uh, read the um, the etymology of assassin. This you know, the history here. Uh, it's a uh, it's uh, it, it comes from Arabic, if I'm not mistaken, right? Well, uh, tell us. Read read the. Can you see the the screen? 
Go ahead and if you just read this paragraph and we'll all learn about it together. Um, all I can see is your picture actually. Oh, you can't see it? Why is it so hard? I don't know why this is having so much problem. Um, I've also shared the link in the chat room there, that last link. Uh, if you click on that, you can see it. OK, let's see. Uh, assessing. OK, so during the time that you can... Yeah, assassin, yes. Uh, I have quarantine, malaria, hazard. Yeah, just, just assassin. Avocado. Ah, assassin. It says a murderer generally somewhat professional, especially one who murders a prominent figure. So th during the time of the crusade, the members of, of a certain secret Muslim sect engaged people to terrorize, to terrorize the Christian enemies by performing murders as a religious duty. These acts were carried out in the influence of hashish, and some of the killers became known as eaters or smokers of hashish. Uh, Hashishins evolved into the word assassin. That's what it says. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. So um, that's interesting. So they're saying that, uh, yeah, you're right. It does come from some kind of uh, Arabic place. Uh, I guess it doesn't, actually, it doesn't say, it doesn't say geographic. It just says uh, from, from uh, Muslims who, uh, who carried out. Uh, acts under the influence of hashish. And, and hashish is the hashish is the marijuana, and we call it in Arabic hashish. Right. So anyone uh, uh, anyone use the hashish or use the marijuana, he we will call him hashashin as a plural hashashin. Okay. So they like hashashin, and this one become assassin, hashashin assassin. Yeah. Eater, uh, eater or smoker. They eat or smoke the marijuana or hashish. Okay. Thank you, Hamoud. I was yeah, I'm glad you I'm glad you said that because it's something new also for me. <laughs> okay, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Me too. The terminology. Okay, so so you say people still use this word in, in, in uh in no, I they they use it when they joke with something or joke with a team. It is say a group of people we when we when we uh, when you feel this people is uh, mad or uh, you can say hashashin, that means they are not in a good oh. mind. So you, yeah. you do use that in your language, then. Yes, no, no. Okay, and so nothing, you, nothing, yeah. nothing related to the killing or right. to, no. <laughs> of we course. Use it for, you know, I mean, we use it, we still use it, but we still use it as a joke or something. Yeah, okay, very interesting. Thank you for that. Yes. Yeah, so we learned something that we couldn't have read in this page. Um, great. Nice. Okay, so, and you can hear that if you listen, if you listen to the word uh, hashashin, it sounds like assassin. Hashashin, assassin. So that's where it comes from. Uh, okay. All right. Oh, wait. So I see, uh, let's, uh, let's continue. But I, I want to say hello to, I see a uh, Mehmed. Are you there, Mehmed? Yeah. Hi. Yes. I want to you, uh, introduce yourself for us so we can meet you? Where are you from? Okay. okay. Uh, I'm, I'm from Bulgaria. Uh, I am 18 years old. I finished school before uh, some days. And I am preparing uh, for English. I want to take... Uh, TOEFL test. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Sure. Well, welcome. Good to have you. Thanks. So today we're learning about we're learning about uh, etymology. Um, okay. Have you been with us long enough to remember? Did you did you learn what etymology means? Do you know what that is? Mm, I didn't understand you because sometimes the connection is. Very bad. Oh, okay. Thank you. Okay, so, um, uh, so we're just doing an etymology class, and etymology is the uh, history of words, basically, the study, mm -hmm. study of where words come from. So, and we've just been learning some different stuff. We've been learning words that come from Greek, Latin, um, 
and uh, Arabic. Um, so uh, can you see the screen, uh, Mehmed? Do you see? Uh... Yes, I can see. It. Okay, great. So, uh, so I'm gonna we're gonna look at something that's coming from another culture. Uh, this word here, malaria. Yes. Um, so this is an infectious disease characterized by chills and fever caused by the bite of an infected uh, Anopheles mosquito. I've never, I've never heard that word before. Um, so would you please read this paragraph so we can learn the etymology of malaria? Okay. Uh, no problem. Uh, this word comes from the medieval. How can I pronounce this medieval uh, medieval medieval uh, I Italian no mal so it's medieval okay uh, mal it equals bat mm -hmm. and arwa equals air describing the miasma from slams around Roma this this in quotes uh, bat air was believed to be the cause of the fever that often developed in those who spent time around the slums. In fact, the illness now known as malaria was due to certain pronozoans present in the mos mosquitoes that bred around these slums and which caused uh, recurring feverish symptoms in those they bit. Good, thank you. Okay, okay. so in this, this word malaria is, again, it's simply just mal, bad, and that's probably, this, this, your many languages that we speak in this classroom probably even use this, this cognate in their language, mal, to mean bad, aria to mean air, and you just stick the two words together and it's still the same spelling today. Um, but, and this is from medieval times, so interesting. Interesting. Okay. Mm, can I ask something? Please. Mm, uh, what uh, does slump, swamp mean? Swamp? swamp yes. Uh, good question. Uh, yes. That's important to know so we can understand the story. Um, can anyone, uh, does anyone know what swamp means? Can anyone tell Mehmed what swamp is? What is a swamp? Swamp lakes or like mm -hmm. yeah it's uh, a lake or lakes yeah it's like a lake sort of yeah uh, body what were you gonna say? Well uh, yeah it's like a lake but with mood. It's like... Yeah it's usually uh, it's it's a body of water it's usually small maybe and it usually has a lot of stuff in it <laughs> so. Um, is it like a marsh? Yeah, ex yeah, it is. Okay. So let's look, look it up. Let's look it up. Uh -huh. so, a seasonally flooded bottomland with more woody plants, with more woody plants than a marsh, uh, but mm -hmm. it better drains than a bog. So uh, something a lowland region saturated with water. So. And look, they even have an etymology down here. Etymology. Perhaps of low German origin. Now I also have, look at this, I have an online etymology dictionary. So we can, oh. uh, so just out of curiosity, let's see if they have anything better here. Um, okay, here, they're saying this is uh, from Old English. Uh, an old Norse proper, which means sponge or fungus. So Proto Germanic, Swampus, Middle English, Middle Dutch, Middle Low German. <laughs> See how, so it goes all the way back. So, anyway, so interesting. All right. So that's a very long answer to the question. Okay, thanks for reading. So, uh, Raphael. Okay. Pedigree? Pedigree is the next? Um, yeah, let's do pedigree. <laughs> <laughs> Noun. 
a line of ancestors, the stand, lineage, genealogy, a register of record of line of ancestors. Believe it to be derived from the French pet de gru, which meant crane's foot. The modern French equivalent is pied de la gru. Mm -hmm. The crane's foot is said to resemble the I don't know, symbol of genealogical trees. Mm -hmm. It has also been suggested that it comes from part degrees, the French by degrees. A pedigree charts records of the relationship of families by degrees. Okay, so that makes sense. Uh, now I understand because if you see those those family charts, um, the you know the mother, father, and then all their children they usually have these these uh, lines like this in the chart where it says here's the here are the parents and here are their three kids. So there may maybe lines like that, and those lines look like uh, look like uh, maybe they look like a crane's foot. That's one thought. Uh, but, uh, if I have a question, pedigrees use it for families of re for relatives uh, in English, but because uh, in French it's, all, uh, it's only used, I think, for the pets. Uh, if you have a dog, the pedigree is the um, family where it f comes his ancestor, but the pet from the pet from the dog. Not, not for families. Oh, okay. Are you saying that in what language? A pedigree, uh, at least in Spanish and in French, I think, uh -huh. is only used for for cats uh, okay. and, and dogs or oh. pets. Okay. Mm -hmm. Interesting. I did not know that. Um, yeah, in, in English, we can use it for anything. Yeah. Thank but it's, it is definitely commonly used for pets, absolutely. Pedigree or... Um, yeah, definitely, definitely used for pets here too. Maybe probably most commonly for us as well. But we can also oh. use for kings and queens, like the pedigree of, you know, royalty or something like that. Okay, so um, uh, let's see here. I'm trying to think. How about so Salma? Okay. Um, let's play a little game here. I guess it's not even a game, but let's just. Uh, um, why don't we just think of any word? Any it could be a simple word, a difficult word, any word that you want to know, an English word, um, and we can learn the history of it. We can learn the etymology of that word. You can. What so about uh, what about the name of Salma? Because this name is used in Arabic and even in the Spanish or uh, French or even in English. It's a famous okay. name. Let's see if names. Let's see if names. Only just. I said just that. Let's see if names. This dictionary. This may not have names, but there are definitely definitely many websites that will give us that too. I don't know if it'll be on this. One. No. <laughs> But uh, we have, there are definitely websites. Uh, Many languages use SE. Here in Egypt, we use SA. I don't know which is right, or they use Selma. Yeah, I've seen that. I've seen that a lot, yeah. I wonder if they are, yeah. So, Nothing. okay, it's, uh, yeah, uh, means safe. Derived from Arabic, Salima, to be safe. And uh, mm -hmm. apparently, this is most popular in the United States. But yeah. Uh, so I, w I wonder if Salma is related. Salma might be completely different than Salma. So that's the thing with sometimes words look the same, but they have nothing to do with each other. And that can be true in names too. See, uh, according to this, according to this uh, website, in their, their research, Selma and Salma are completely different names. Salma comes from mm -hmm. Arabic, and Selma comes from, uh, uh, yeah, comes from Europe. 
So meaning unknown, possibly possibly a short uh, short version of Anselma. Uh, so we don't know. We don't know that, but we do know it's you know European is not in the Middle East. So they're totally different um, words, even though they almost the same words and totally different histories. So that's very interesting. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Okay, good question. So. But I, I'll still leave you leave leave the floor to you, Salma. If you'd like to pick any word, we can uh, we can uh, check it out. Mm. Uh, uh, the word restaurant. I think it's French or uh, English origin. Hmm. Let's find out. Yes. Exactly. And this is a funny word because it's actually pretty much spelled the same in so many languages, and it doesn't even change. Mm -hmm. Whoops. So yeah, restaurant, uh, restaurant uh, is a restaurant spelled the same, and it's been used in Paris uh, in 1765. Maybe. So it's actually a fairly recent word. This is a very new word in terms of linguistics. Uh, mm -hmm. Originally, food that restores, uh, and you can have a, a noun use, a uh, present participle, restore, to restore, refresh, uh, restore. Away. Yeah, so, yeah, fairly new word, really. Okay, great, interesting. Mm -hmm. Thank you for that. So, um, Assad. Yes. What are you interested in? What should we? Well, she was just talking about about food again. We we keep coming back to food, huh? <laughs> Maybe we're all hungry. I don't know. So, uh, <laughs> what about? Uh, what do you think? What What do you want to look up? Anything in the world? Uh, sugar. Sugar. Okay. Still talking about food. <laughs> but that's a good. That's a good one. Interesting. I, I'm curious. Um. Oh wait, let me go back. I see this one here. This one. This is the one we want. Okay, so again French. Again French, but much older. 13th century. Oh. So, so much older. This is like 500 years older than the word restaurant. Um, so look at this. Uh, yeah, this word has barely changed in in uh, in 800 years or however long, it's basically the same exact word. It has barely changed at all. Sucre, sucre, and sugar. Uh, medieval Latin uh, uh, sucarum. Ah, and Arabic sukar, which still looks the same. Yeah. So um, Persian shakar, and even Sanskrit sh sharkara, which means ground or candied sugar. So if Sanskrit is an ancient language in, from India but is actually from the same uh, giant language family as all of these languages. So even though it's an ancient language from in India, it's actually still related to French. And so we even see these cognates uh, that appear no, sugar and shakara, shakara actually look somewhat uh, similar because they actually come from a, this giant family of languages. It's like a family of language families. <laughs> so, um, and we can keep going back further. Grit, gravel, cognate with Greek. So, croque, which means pebble. So, it's interesting. So it, so it just keeps going back and back and back. And, and somehow, we we're, there's been linguists throughout the wor world, throughout history, that have just that have been very good at documenting all this stuff. And uh, so we have all this this uh, almost trivial knowledge of uh, words. Okay. Okay. So oh, very interesting. Um, and I think uh, uh, pin pineapple. Pineapple. 
Yeah. I think all the world say Benabul. Uh, only ma 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 in America say Benabul. All the world say Ananas or something. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, I've seen that meme on Facebook too. The, uh, yeah. Uh, there's like 300, no, not 300, but there's like, what, 20 languages that have given examples of Ananas. Everyone says Ananas. Every language all over the world, Ananas, Ananas. That's all yeah. the same word. Why do Americans call it? Why do the English speakers call it pineapple? Where did that go? Why? Actually, so in Somali language, ananas. Also in Arabic, it's ananas. Exactly. In Arabic, it's in Spanish, it's in it's in French, it's in all of them. It's everywhere. <laughs> no, except for <laughs> pineapple. Why? Who knows? Except the English language. So yeah, it's a weird language. So, 14th century pine cone. So it's a, it's just uh, whoops, excuse me, I didn't mean to do that. So it's just uh, this name comes from the way the fruit looks. It looks like a pine cone, and it's a fruit. So it's just coming from the from the shape. And we just uh, somehow didn't borrow it from any other language. Okay. This so, is an interesting site. You will spend some time playing with the, with the world with this site. What's that? Say that again. Yeah, I, I, I mean, the, this site you just opened, it's online yeah. uh, etymology uh, mm -hmm. dictionary. It's uh, interesting, and we can play a game with this one. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. Have fun and uh, learn something new also. Yeah, definitely. It's, you could do a lot. Yeah. Mehmed says uh, in Bulgarian, it's also on and off. It's uh, everything, everywhere. Okay, so I just shared yes. the link of. Uh, of this website that we can look at uh, on our own time and learn about uh, the history of language. Thanks for sharing that So, and make sure if you're looking at the website, there's also this part here, abbreviations. So, which is right here. If you click on that, you go to this page. And you'll see all these things. So, like, you'll see C means sense century. Um, so, you see all these things. So, it'll help you read. It'll help you learn how to read this dictionary. And you can learn about these uh, ancient languages, these languages that don't exist Old Norse, Old High German. A lot of these words come from these ancient, extinct languages. So, so yeah, so we we had a little bit of a basic introduction to etymology. Uh, okay, see you in a minute. And um, I thought it was pretty interesting. Does anyone have any uh, any other questions? Or we might have time. To, or if not, we can look. We have time to look up one more word too. Any Anthony. Yes. What is the difference um, style style of American or Britain? Sometimes it, it makes me confused about the word. The words from British sometimes different than mm -hmm. American. Yeah, they are slightly. So what makes they yeah. different? Um, the the differences in the words, in the pronunciation or the spelling or what or everything. Yeah, it's accent. Accent too, accent. and words. Yeah, so there's the, there's a different accent. So there's different, you know, there's different spellings sometimes. Um, different words completely. There's some words that they use in uh, in England that we don't use at all here, and vice versa. And uh, yeah. elephantry or left. Say it again. El uh, elephantry and left. Elephantry? Uh, what is that? Le uh, okay, uh, the lift. Oh, 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 elevator and lift. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, 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 <laughs> Thank you. So, yeah, for instance, uh, yeah, I mean, I can't tell you in one sentence what the difference is because it's just, there's just a huge difference. Or not a huge, it's a small difference, but I don't know why. It's just a geographic thing, I think. But, yeah, so for instance, uh, elevator. In, in in America, we call uh, the, the machine that goes from floor to floor in a building an elevator, and in most other uh, British English countries, they say a lift. 
Uh, another really popular one is uh, apartments. If you live in an apartment in New York City, you would live in a flat in London. What? And you've heard that. So flat is in most countries. In the United States, it's, it's an apartment always. Oh. Uh, or the hood of a car. If you need to work on your car, it's the, the, the hood. And in England, it's bonnet. Stuff like that. So but it's just a difference. And we're, we're out of time. So thanks, everyone, for... Uh, thank, thank you, teacher. Yeah, good job. It was an interesting class. Very thank interesting, you. yeah. Thanks, everyone. I learned a lot. Thank you. Bye-bye. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much, teacher. Bye. See you next time. Thanks a lot. Bye. Okay. See you.